Continuing now on America Talks Live, where we welcome your calls at 1 877 Newsmax. That's 1 877 639 7629. You heard part of what we're going to talk about tonight on Newsmax Prime, but another subject we're going to talk about is something we've been talking about already. Donald Trump with uh, a real problem in the person of House Speaker Paul Ryan. Will the division between those two cause an even deeper rift within the Republican Party? Miranda Kahn has more now on her prime preview. Miranda? J.D. Trump isn't exactly taking the recent fallout of some of his fellow Republicans too well. And when I say that, I mean he's lashing out. He lit up social media again today, ripping into Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan and what has become I think it's fair to say his harshest attack yet. The GOP nominee sent out this tweet calling Ryan a very weak and ineffective leader. Also, he said this, Paul Ryan should spend more time on balancing the budget, jobs, and illegal immigration and not waste his time on fighting the Republican nominee. The tweets were triggered following the House Speaker's conference call yesterday where he told fellow Republicans that he would no longer defend and campaign with the GOP presidential nominee. His remarks in addition to several Republicans who are drawing their support of Trump have some questioning if this could further divide the GOP party. We're of course going to talk more about this tonight on Newsmax Prime. And as a recovering <clears throat> Republican member of Congress, uh, you know, I, I wanted, I tried to take a vow. Yes. That once I got out of it in years past, I wouldn't go, well, back in the old days, but here I am saying, you got to. well, yeah, because back in the old days, and I was talking about this earlier, mm -hmm. it became apparent to us that Bob Dole was not going to win the election against Bill Clinton. The numbers just weren't there. Right. But you didn't have Newt preening and parading and going around and making sure his press people all called the Washington Post to say, hey, I'm not going to be there with that guy. I mean, everybody has a dust up now and then. And Newt won once <laughs> infamously of Bob Dole years before Dole's presidential campaign, I think called him the chief tax collector for the welfare state. But all of that was forgotten. A and Publicly, we put on the face, it may be an uphill battle, but Bob Dole can handle it. Dole ran 20 points behind me in my district. That's a pretty huge load to carry, and I narrowly won re-election. But I would not go out and trash the nominee of the party. What I see, knowing Paul Ryan, mm -hmm. the worst possible thing could happen to a guy who was, you know, we're all ambitious in politics, but when he was named as run, Romney's running mate, Right. And when he was handed the speakership by Boehner, Begged. he Begged he said, "Yeah, they, they, <laughs> he just thinks it's all there for him." Well, people also wanted him to step up to the plate and become the presidential well, nominee, did, which, he did, which he declined to do. Yeah. But but let me ask you this: I mean, having having served, do you think Paul Ryan feels somewhat torn between protecting uh, people who are up for seats and? Concern his is con it, it, concern he, should be with them versus Trump. I mean, I would think that's a very tough spot for him. Well, to be. yeah, but political pragmatism calls for you to do that quietly. You don't come out and and see this is the thing about Ryan. It's it's the same thing. The first rule, if you really care about those, mm -hmm. that if, if you're in command, what do you do? You take care of your troops. But remember, Ryan, when he became Speaker, had it all bass ackward. He comes out going. I'm not going to do it unless you let me go home on the weekends. And they sold that as family values. Hey, pal, if you got a problem being away from your family, maybe you shouldn't be in Congress. If you're going to be the speaker, you got to step up and do that. So somehow he has kind of had this reputation in the party as the golden child. Mm -hmm. And now he's acting like a spoiled child. And one of the guys with whom I serve, uh, in fact, went on record calling him gutless. So, uh, and that's within the House Republican conference. So Paul may not end up being speaker if the Republicans still keep the majority because he's just gone into a situation. And it's a guy who knows a lot about Republicans, Republican politics. Dana Rohrabacher mm -hmm. used to be a speech writer for Ronald Reagan, was a yaffer, young American for freedom, camped out in Reagan's yard, drafting him to run for governor back in the mid sixties. And it's Rohrabacher quoted as calling Ryan gutless. Obviously, there is well, more Reagan, to come on this. Uh, what did he basically alluded that he's disloyal? So, 
Those are some pretty uh, harsh statements to make against the House Speaker, but we're going to talk more again tonight on Newsmax Prime about this rift and, and see if it's going to widen even more so. Also on Newsmax Prime, as mentioned earlier, Ron Kessler on the Secret Service and more on WikiLeaks and Hillary. Drip, drip, She's got drip, some problems. Drip. Yeah, right. we'll see. Miranda, thanks very much. Always. Now, before we all part company, it's worth taking a look at Donald Trump on the stump in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania last night, where he ran in to a, a mini Trump. So Trump gets the mini me up on stage and watch his interaction with this toddler. What's your, what's your name? Name. Now, he's supposed to look like Donald Trump, but he's actually much too good looking. You are really handsome. Are you having a good time tonight? Night. Where's your daddy? And your mommy, right? Rope, do you want to go back? Do you want to go back to them, or do you want to stay with Donald Trump? Trump. Now, you want the evidence that, that Trump is not your typical politician? When he asked the little guy, you, you want to go back to your mommy and daddy or stay with Trump? And the kid says, Trump. Usually politicians say, mm, I don't want to get in that situation because what if the kid says, I want to go back to mommy and daddy? So that shows you Donald Trump is from the outside. It also shows you that he ain't the monster the dominant media culture and Hillary Clinton make him out to be. Uh, couple of minutes remaining in the program. We want more of your calls since, after all, this is America Talks Live. Let's go way out west to Fresno, California at 1-877-NEWSMAX, 1-877-639-7629. In Fresno, it's Donald who is on the line. Donald, I'm guessing your last name is not Trump. Hello, Donald. Did I lose Donald? Oh, unfortunately, but that's okay. Donald, call back sometime. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. From Maryland, Doreen is on the line. Doreen. Hi, how are you today? Doing fine. Got a couple of minutes. Make them count. What's on your mind? Okay, my uh, topic of conversation is the media. I just feel, as a citizen of the United States of America, the media is trying to sway the, the public way too much. Um, we vote for a president. Um, as a country, I think they need to get out and start getting the citizens' opinions more, and just not the media's opinion. You know, that is a very valid point, Doreen, and that's why we're so thankful that you're watching us here at Newsmax TV. As we say time and again, we're not the media, we're Newsmax TV, and we're not going to lecture you on what you should think. We just want you to tell us what's on your mind. And Doreen, what you are saying, uh, I have heard so often, during my years, both in broadcasting and politics, when they talk about polls, people say, hey, hey, wait a minute, you didn't poll me. And of course, in the final analysis, the only polls that were count, that will count are those that open on the first Tuesday following the first Monday in November. This year, I believe it falls on November 8th, election day. And in the final analysis, we will see what those polls say and that, of course, will give us uh, the total of states and the electoral votes, and we will see who will become our next president. Doreen from Maryland, a great way to finish up the calls here on America Talks Live. Now, we mentioned it earlier, some of the subject matter we will be talking about again tonight at 8 Eastern on Newsmax Prime, author Ron Kessler, who continues to do his work with the Secret Service, will hear where the Secret Service stands on these two candidates, at least behind closed doors, Brad Blakeman, and my old congressional colleague, former Intelligence Committee Chair Pete Hoekstra. We'll be looking for you tonight at 8, looking for you tomorrow here at 1 on America Talks Live. See you then, and thanks for watching.